Okay. Okay, so we're going to talk about what's called the mean value theorem today. Mean value theorem. So here's the situation. It says that uh, airline pilots are concerned with turbulence. So they're eager for any reliable indicator of potential trouble. So in meteorology, the greater the rate of change of temperature with respect to altitude, so you're thinking about as you change altitude, if there's, a, if there's sharp changes in temperature for changes in altitude, that's where there's potential for turbulence, okay? So this, that, that rate of change of temperature with respect to altitude in absolute value, whether it's increasing as you go up or decreasing as you go up, but just a, a, a large change is known as the lapse rate, okay? So a lapse rate greater than seven degrees Celsius per kilometer is considered unsafe, meaning potential for turbulence that they want to avoid. Okay, so here's the situation. At 3.2 kilometers above the ground, temperature reading is 5 degrees Celsius. And at 6.1 kilometers above the ground, temperature reading is negative 18.3. So in that height interval, height range from 3.2 to 6.1, does it contain an unsafe flying altitude? So I, I'm trying to print off... Uh, worksheets for you and basically the first part of the worksheet is for you to investigate this question so you can just do it on your own notes and work together at your table and come up with any ideas you have to analyze the situation if you know these two temperature readings at these two heights would you say yes or no that there would be an unsafe flying altitude somewhere in there because of this lapse rate limit okay so work on that I'll try to get our handouts done Trade ideas, okay? So it's kind of an open-ended question that you're working on.
was hoping for lively conversation when I returned. Anyone think to make a graph? Started before I said that. Then. Everybody have one. Okay, what were your thoughts on this? What is this table talking about right here? That's for Kyle, Mason, Jason. doing by doing that? Okay. Okay. And that's, that's the end of the story? Just that? What is that number that you calculated? Is that is that the collapse rate at any particular for any particular elevation? Kyle says no. What do you mean the lapse rate over the whole distance? What do you mean? Mason or, sorry, go ahead, Kyle. Kyle. No, Kyle, you can finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mason, what were you going to say? Same thing. Does, okay, so we, get an, we got an average, okay? So average what? Yeah, average rate of change, right? So, that, so you got the average rate of change was what? So the average rate of change... Say it one more time, Jessica. 8.03 Celsius. Okay, so that's the average rate of change. So does it guarantee that that there's an altitude um, greater than seven degrees Celsius somewhere? Why? Okay, yeah, so she said, so you think looking at the graph? So here's something like this, right? So how would we represent the average rate of change between these two points? Ryan. So I guess the question is, what really is average rate of change? So we're talking about in the range from 3.2 to 6.1, we're saying the average rate of change is 8.03. What does that mean, that the average rate of change is 8.03? How would we represent that? Jason? How would we represent it graphically? Yeah, so that's how we calculated it, right? But how would we... Patrick? Okay. So, and when we have a straight line, what is that? Those are all the values that are satisfied. 
Okay, but if we're talking about rate of change, and now we're drawing a straight line for rate of change. Yeah. Okay, it's a quantity. True. Okay, that's true. Come. Cool. Yeah. So, so this, an average. It's just one value, right? Is 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 the rate of change in every point between these truly 8.03? No. But this is this is one value that's trying to represent, right? The rate of change between those, and since it's just one value. It's a constant rate of change. That's what average rate of change is. It's the constant rate what that produces the same change in y over the change in x. It produces the same change in y over the change in x. So we don't know what's happening in between here, but we know the overall change in y. So we can create a constant rate for that change in y. So it's the constant rate to produce the same change in temperature over the same change in altitude. Delta A, change in altitude. I'm running out of room. That's what an average rate is. An average rate is a constant rate, right? An average rate of change is a constant rate of change. So now what were you saying, uh, Lizzie? So the average rate's 8.03. So if it's continuous, okay. uh, then there's going to have to be some point where we can trace beyond where the state is going to be. She said, if I draw from here to here, and leave and leave the leave the pen on the page. It's continuous, right? She's saying there has to be somewhere in there where the rate of change is 8.03, which is greater than seven. Therefore, we're exceeding the lapse rate. So can can I draw some kind of profile of temperatures from this elevation to this elevation that doesn't somewhere have that rate of change. Can I do it? So I'm going to try. Okay, ready? So here, I'm doing like this, right? Oh no, I guess now I've got to do this, right? What just happened? Sharp decrease, right? Okay, so I'm going to try again. All right, how about that? What if the profile of temperature changes was that second one I drew? Did I avoid 8.03? Where did I hit 8.03? I mean, so anywhere, I mean, so along the way I did, somewhere in here, and then I, again, exceeded it at the end. Okay, what about this? We're black. How about that? So this, this is like kind of constant, and this is just barely decreasing. Tony. That's a huge drop from the straight the curve. It's so here did. But there's nowhere where the rate of change is greater than 8.03. Right? No. Dan Danny. It's impossible to go to a lapse rate to do that. Okay. Well so, so what what is this again? What is my y axis? What's the quantity on the y axis? Uh, it's just temperature, right? So is that what you meant? Yeah, it's impossible for a temperature to do that. Yeah, so, so as you, temperature, we're talking about continuous. Temperature, as you change in altitude, would have to change continuously. It can't make a jump like this. And even so, if it makes a jump like that, that's the exact thing we're trying to avoid, right? That's the exact thing that creates the turbulence, if that were even possible. But it's not. There, there has to be a continuous change in temperature as you change <laughs> So, so that was kind of the idea of having those graphs there, having you try to, try to draw from one point to the next and never achieve that average, never achieve that average rate or the slope of that line.
it's impossible if you if it's continuous. Does that make sense? Okay, so there's a couple questions at the bottom of that page. Does an average rate of change of three um, degrees Celsius per kilometer um, over three kilometers ensure safety everywhere between those altitudes? So why don't you draw, let's see, from like on that first graph, like up in the upper right part, like say from five kilometers to eight kilometers, set up a situation where the average rate of change is, now this is plus three, okay, so plus three degrees Celsius, say from five to eight. Now notice the scales, the scales are different, okay? You got the 10, 20, 30 scale for temperature and then single kilometers. Is the task clear? So I'm saying from here, from 5 to 8 kilometers in altitude, somewhere up in here, show a rate of change of 3 degrees Celsius per kilometer between 5 and 8. And when I said increase, in this case, it's uh, temperature's increasing as you go up. It's like a, a, gra a, a hot draft up above or something. And then answer this question. Talk amongst yourselves. Does that ensure safety between those altitudes? Does that ensure safety between those altitudes? The average rate? It is. Okay, John Paul brought up the fact. This neg this 8.03, it's negative. Negative rate of change. Temperature is going down as, as, temp as altitude goes up. Absolutely. That should have been negative 8.03. In terms of the last phase, it's the absolute value. Either. Right, so any change, whether it's increasing or decreasing. So, so yeah. So whether it goes up 7 and, you know, at a, a point or down. Okay, so if I if I have it at ten degrees Celsius at five kilometers, what would it be at eight kilometers to have this this average rate of change of three? John Paul says nineteen. Agree? Why nineteen? Uh, because there is a different. It's a it's a three kilometer interval. Okay. And it's a average rate of change of three degrees Celsius per kilometer. Okay. So the average rate, if if that increases at a constant rate like that, it'll increase at the constant rate of. Every kilometer we go up, it increases three degrees. So we're in the clear. Ben, right? Okay, so it doesn't matter. So I just I just said let's let's make this one go up, like there was like some warm draft above or something like that. But e either way, it's fine. So what about my conclusion here that we're good? You like that? David yeah. says yes.
Alan, do you agree? I'm sure we got insured safety here. Jessica? No. Why not? Because if, if it's spiked, Okay. So, 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 so you have okay. So tell me what a profile might look like that you're saying would be unsafe that would have this average rate. Yeah. Or, I don't know. I mean, it could even be like a slanted semicircle kind of thing. Okay. Like this? It wouldn't drop. It would only drop in one direction, right? Like it would hit one. All right, so I've drawn this snaky sinusoidal thing that she wants. Does it have an average rate of three per kilometer? Is it safe in between those altitudes? No. no look at this. See, here, red for danger, right? Red for danger. The way I've drawn it, it looks like it'd be a lot greater than seven, right? Per um, per kilometer. Is there somewhere else? Yeah, right at the beginning too. See, see those two places. Well, and on the decrease too. And on the decrease, yeah. So that that's an exaggerated situation. But just because your average rate is below, doesn't guarantee that you don't have a place in there where the the lapse rate would be greater than seven. Do you see the point? Okay, what about this? Does an average rate of 9 over 3 kilometers ensure danger somewhere between those altitudes? Are you changing your mind? Are you changing your mind? Well, I thought it was ensure danger all over the surface. Somewhere. Somewhere would there have to be danger? Okay, this is the idea of the mean value theorem. That if you have an average, if you've got an average rate of change between two values in your domain, and you have, and it's continuous, then you're going to have to have at least one place that reaches that, that has that average rate at a single, at a point. Okay, that's the that's the idea. Any questions on that? Okay, so here's a here's a visual. So what are we showing here? So this is this black is part of a function, and the blue is just showing the interval of x that we're 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 concerned about. Okay. So the blue bar is just saying oh, we're only concerned with this interval, and here is our here is our uh, part of the function. No, not part of the function. It's showing these are two points of the function. Okay, there's a point. This is a point of the function. This is a point of the function. So what does the black line represent? If we, all we know for sure is that these are two points of the function. Brian Kirk, what would that black line represent if we know for sure these are two points of the function? Uh, average rate of change. Aver Jason, what are you going to say? Yeah, average rate of change, right? Average rate of change. Okay, now watch. Okay, so now let's make heads or tails. What is this? What is this? We know those two red points are parts of our function. So, what is our function? So now I'm showing you the function. Where? How am I showing you the function? Where? What part of that is the function? Alan. Okay. The red is the actual function. What else is this showing? Let's make it's gonna make sense of what we're seeing here. David. Uh, isn't the this one the exact rate of change? He's saying it's the exact rate of change. Which one? Which exact rate of change? Oh go ahead. The one that's kinda of changing the oh the the one that goes across the whole screen. Okay, so this this one, this one here. But which, which rate of change is it showing? Which exact rate of change is that blue line showing? Uh, of the point on the right there. Oh, it's the rate of change of the point on the right that's rounded. 
Right. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Clicking once ahead. Here we go. <coughs> okay, so in between those two x values across this interval, where, where does the exact rate of change meet up with the average rate? What, so we said that it will always, there will be a place where it hits the average rate. So where does it hit the average rate? Tell me when to stop. So say stop when it hits the average rate, when the exact rate hits the average rate. Right here? Here the exact rate is equal to the average rate. Do it again. The exact rate of change is always, how could you characterize it? It's always what? So it's showing different values, but all those values are negative, right? For every point between our two points, over this interval, the exact rate of change is always negative. <laughs> but what's the average? What's the average rate of change? Positive. So, but I thought we said that there has to be a place in the interval where the exact rate of change is the average rate of change. Okay, so what's, yeah, so what is the issue here that's allowing us? Can't do it. It's not in between here and stop. Yeah, right, so that's, that's what Leslie said too. Right, because of this jump from negative one to one, the function is such that everywhere that rate of change exists, it's negative, but the average between those, those endpoints is positive. So what's the point of this? The point is this, that you have this necessary condition that the function, the function has to be continuous in order to make that conclusion of that there has to be a place in the interval where the exact rate of change is the same as the average rate of change. Okay, how about this one? Again, same thing. I got two points. Of the curve. Reshma, what is this black line showing me? If I know these are two points on my curve. Is that black? Aver and tell me about the average rate of change. What, what is the average rate of change? Is it positive? What's that? Negative. Greatly negative or just a little bit negative? A little bit negative. For, for a change in x, you just get a small decrease in y for a change in x, okay? On, the, on this average rate of change, okay? All right, so here's a continuous function. Continuous for, for every point between those two points. So that's what we said the condition was that it had to be continuous. So tell me where the exact rate of change in this interval matches the average rate. That's an idea. So how about this? Guy? Kyle? Why not? Okay. What specifically about the shape of the graph? Yeah. David.
So Kyle and David are both focusing on this. This is seeming to cause a problem. What is the rate of change of the red function at that point, at the cusp? What is the rate of change? Piecewise function doesn't exist. How, how can we think about this rate of change? Or how can we think of it? Why does it not exist? Okay, the limit doesn't exist. Limit of what? Like, talk to me about rate of change here. Ellie, what do you think? What's the rate of change at that point? Rate of change is zero there. Ben, what do you think? Is the rate of change zero there? Watch what happens. Watch. Rate of change, rate of change. Watch it. What's the rate of change? Trevor, what do you think? At that point, at the top. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like almost immediately just like the inverse of what it was like before. I okay. David, what are you going to add? I was going to say on that exact point, it doesn't have a rate of change. What is causing that? Um, it's like in between two different graphs. Yes, yeah, so what Lizzie said about limits is right. So from this side, the rate of change is, it looks like it's approaching something, right? But then what about from the other side? It's suddenly it's totally different, right? So coming from the, coming from the, coming from the left side, we would think, oh, the rate of change is like this, right? If we, if we got, started getting close to one from the left, then as soon as we get a little bit on the right side, the rate of change is this. So at that point, it does not exist. The rate of change does not exist. Okay, and here's a situation. We have a situation. Notice the, that the exact rate of change, it never matches the average rate. So here's another condition that we need. So what was the first condition that we have to have? Continuous function. Second condition that we need to have? What would you have to say? What are we violating here that would need to be true? Eric? Um, that there always needs to be a limit to Right. So your rate of change would have to always exist on the interval. Or, so yes, or, or be, always be defined on the interval. Well, so yeah, so if you had a break in the graph, your derivative wouldn't exist. Yes. But we can have a continuous, I'm showing you a continuous function where there's this other thing that's happening. So yeah. just, just saying a continuous function is not enough. Right, but the second one is uh, as long as it's differentiable everywhere within the interval you're mm -hmm. looking at, mm -hmm. as long as it has like a dy dx there, mm -hmm. then, um, then you can use the mean value theorem. And that also covers breaks in the graph because right. if there's a break, it wouldn't be differentiable. Okay, so yeah, that's true. Okay, so here we're saying, under what condition are we assured that there's some number c in the interval between a and b so that the exact rate of change is equal to the average rate? That's what we're saying, right? The exact, so some, exists some value such that the exact rate is equal to the average rate. In other words, what conditions will assure us that the function's rate of change at some value equals its average rate of change? So we said f is continuous. And the derivative exists. Then we say for sure there is this number c in the interval so that 
the exact rate of change is the average rate. So for instance, if your average speed was 73 miles per hour for a period of time, then sometime during that moment, during that time, you must have gone 73 miles per hour. Why can we say that? Why? How is it that we can make this conclusion in this scenario here? What's that? Okay, so which so what is continuous? What quantity is continuous? So how do we match this up with the conditions? What quantity are we saying is continuous that so that it, it meets the condition of the mean value theorem? Speed. Speed? Time? Not speed. Speed is speed is the rate, rate of change, right? <coughs> so it's the quantity whose whose rate of change is speed. That's what we need to be continuous. What is that? What quantity has the average or rate of change of speed? Distance, right? So your distance covered. So what we'd be looking at here is a distance time graph. Distance needs to be continuous. That's the first condition. And what's the second condition, John Paul? So in this scenario, how would you say the second condition? There would, in that scenario, there would, would have to be the beginning of the entire interval of the gap. And we'd have to have the rate of change that we're looking for at some point during that interval. So it would be, uh, you'd, have to have, you'd, have to, you'd have to hit 73 miles per hour at some point on that interval. That's the conclusion. So what's the other condition where we can make that conclusion? So my average rate is 73 miles per hour. There's my average rate right there. So we said the first condition is that distance would have to be Continuous. You can't all of a sudden jump ahead five feet or half a mile, right? Your distance with time has to continuously increase. What's the other condition that has to be met here in this scenario? How would we apply it to this scenario here? Tony, any idea? So the first condition is met. We said distance is continuous. So what's the second condition in this scenario? How do we apply this scenario to the mean value theorem saying, okay, here's the second condition of met? Brian, right here. What is the second condition? How about? Right. This one. So how do we say that in the terms of this context? Yeah, Rishma. Um, so this is talking more about like instantaneous, like at every point in time. So what could you say, at every point in time? What would have to exist at every point in time? What's that? At a, I'm sorry, there's some speed, exactly. Right, that's what the derivative is here, speed. So it's just saying every point in time, there is some speed assigned to that point in time. That means that the, the rate of change always exists, and the distance traveled is continuous, Therefore, we know this has to be true, that in that interval, you'd have to have gone 73 at some time. That's the mean value theorem.
Okay, so this I'll just give you this as part of your homework. So he's basically saying that he was on the turnpike. And this is, this is all, you don't have to write this down, it's all written on there, on the back of your page. Um, he went to the toll plaza at a certain time, and then he went through a second toll plaza 52 miles away, and receipt marked his time from the first to the second. And so then she, the toll attendant, handed him a speeding ticket. And he said no one actually witnessed him going over the speed limit, and he lost. Okay. And then he appealed, and he said, even if he did break the speed limit, it was just for a moment. He swore that if he went 65 for most of the distance between plazas, and then the judge doubled his fine. Okay? So, why? So that's part of your homework, so think about that. Okay? And then there's some problems from uh, the textbook. So those will be due Friday. That stuff's due, uh, that won't be due tomorrow. That'll be due Friday, along with something else that we have tomorrow. Okay, so we'll start, uh, we're going to start new material tomorrow, and you'll have the homework from today and tomorrow due Friday. Okay. Hey.